I did want to get started off um, by having the students, since I, I don't know who, uh, who's in the program right now. If uh, anybody's currently in the program for the students, could you please stand up? We'd like to give you a big round of applause. And anybody who is graduating, if you could stay standing, just so we, if we have an extra smile today, we're going to point it at these people. So, great job. So, a little bit about um, what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, I don't like to give speeches. I'm not a speech person, but I'm pretty good at business and I can give a business presentation, so <laughs> that's what we're going to go with tonight. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about me, a little bit about McDonald's, um, why I'm even here today, um, a little bit of my advice, and then we'll open it up to questions. Um, first question, yes, I played basketball. Uh, <laughs> I am six foot six. Um, I played uh, in high school, but then I played in junior college for two years and got free college. So um, where I come from, that's fantastic to get free college. Um, I'm roughly the size of Manu Ginobili. So he might look small on TV, but he's really this big. So um, we probably already know this answer, but what is this? Iowa, that's right. So again, the bio stole a little bit of my thunder. I did a little presentation at Mary Help 8th graders last year, and we struggled with this, right? I see a couple of them in the back. We kind of struggled with Iowa, but so I'm from Des Moines, Iowa, all right? Uh, that's the capital of Des Moines. Um, I grew up there, lived there for about 30 years, and then, um, as I mentioned, I attended a few different colleges there. Um, I was the first person in my family to go to college. Uh, I grew up uh, in a very blue-collar uh, family. Mom works at uh, J.C. Penney's, and my dad's a delivery driver. Um, and uh, I just, at the time, just wanted to play basketball. But that was my that was my uh, way to getting into college, and uh, kept me motivated. I've always been a, a goal-oriented person, and uh, talk a little bit about goals a little bit later on. Um, but that's something that has always pushed me. Um, I'm married to my beautiful wife Danielle. Um, we've been in Laredo since 2010. Like cars, boats, guns, I don't know, fun stuff, uh, working out, traveling. And uh, JDR, JDRF, anybody know what JDRF is? Somebody's saying it back there. Juvenile uh, Diabetes Research Foundation. Uh, I'm a type 1 diabetic, which is basically uh, juvenile diabetes. And I know big eyes, right? I'm di I have diabetes. Uh, but it's, it's type 1, which is the kind that um, usually uh, uh, children get at a young age, um, but eventually they grow into adults, and uh, you end up uh, with full-size people like me that have type 1 diabetes, and uh, it's just commonly known as juvenile diabetes, but um, something I'm also uh, very passionate about, I, I test my blood four times a day, I carry a, a man purse on the table here so I can carry my insulin and my needles, but uh, you know, it's something that, uh, that you can live with. Um, a little bit about McDonald's. McDonald's was started in 1955. Um, just got a couple questions earlier tonight. Has anybody seen the movie The Founder? You did? Um, it's a pretty good movie. Uh, it's pretty accurate. Um, the gentleman, uh, Ray Kroc, wrote a book in the late 70s before he passed away, and it chronicles how he built the, um, <laughs> how he built it, right? If you've seen the movie, there's a lot of drama there. but. Um, it's pretty true. The guy was a pretty cutthroat businessman, and, um, but he helped build one of the largest brands in the world uh, because of it. But it's a good movie. I'd recommend seeing it. Um, over 90% of the McDonald's locations are locally owned by individuals and families, such as uh, my wife and I. Um, there's actually three families uh, in the city of Laredo that own McDonald's, the De Leon family, the Dobsky family, and then the Morascos. Um, and us... Uh, three families kind of make up the McDonald's or Laredo product. I usually am the one out in front um, doing speeches and uh, in the public, but there are three families, and uh, I don't want to take all the credit for the great work that we do in the community. Um, you know, again, McDonald's normally comes across as a, a uh, large corporation, 
Uh, but again, it's uh, built on 90% of it is uh, local people just like myself. Um, here in McDonald's, uh, the first one was uh, in 1973 down on Santa Ursula downtown. Um, we own and operate 15 of the McDonald's, as mentioned earlier, uh, of the 17. The other family owns a, a couple of them here in town, the Deleons. Uh, we have about 900 employees, and we serve literally thousands of customers every single day. It never ends, you know. <laughs> so, uh, a couple of facts, you know. People uh, always give me a hard time about McDonald's. Um, people I grew up with, my friends. Um, we use uh, Tyson chicken, Kraft cheese, uh, fresh express salads, new, uh, Newman salad dressings, and Oak Farms milk. Just to name some products, you go get HEB, that's also what we serve inside of McDonald's. Um, we're one of the largest outlets for beef, chicken, poultry, cheese, milk, uh, blueberries, kale, lettuce, mangoes, apples in the United States. Like we are number one, we buy more apples than anybody in the United States. And people usually don't talk about that. We talk about the, you know, the burgers and the fries and they'll make you fat and the movie and you know stuff like that and that's the easy stuff you know but the truth is we s literally serve more apples than anybody and more kale than anybody else you know there's kale in our salads all these people are worried about their kale salads well you can go to mcdonald's and get one too that's what i eat about three times a week so um you know if i ask you what what business am i in what do i do for a living and uh, I get a lot of, lot of feedback, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of answers. But um, we were just talking uh, with Jesse a little bit earlier, and um, most people say I'm in, the, I'm in the burger and fry business. I sell burgers and fries and ice cream and salads and other stuff too, but burgers and fries. And that's pretty true. Um, that's pretty accurate. That's a, that is the bulk of our business for what we sell. But the number one thing that I do for a living is I'm in the people business. How many employees did I say we have? 900 employees. How many customers every day do we see? Thousands. How could I, I'm pretty good at my job and I can drop fries and cook meat and take orders and do the headset, but I can only do that for a few people, right? I can't do thousands and I need a really good team to help me out. And this is our top 35 people um, in our company. This is our Christmas photo last year. We went out to a ranch, had a little party, and had our Christmas photo, and we sent out Christmas cards. You know, without our team, um, we really can't accomplish what we need to be doing every day to serve the thousands of customers that like to come and see us. So, again, not quite the burger and fry guy. I'm more the people guy. And, uh, you know, what are these people all doing? They're smiling, right? <laughs> People don't typically like to work for people unless they get to smile throughout the day a little bit. And uh, that's one of our goals as a company is to keep people happy and productive and, you know, have their back. And that's one of our, one of our fundamental goals. But these are some of our key employees <clears throat> that help lead our restaurants and our office staff. And I got to keep them smiling. That's my job. Um, a little bit about me. So I started working um, at when I was 14 years old, and uh, I worked at a pizza restaurant. I started out bussing tables and then um, moved into washing dishes. After, then after about a year, I got to actually start making some pizzas at the pizza place. You'd think you'd start out there, but no, you got to work your way up to playing with the spinning the dough and stuff like that. But over, uh, before I started working for McDonald's, I worked for, I was counting them up the other day, I worked for eight different companies and I had um, 10 bosses. And I never once had a boss that I liked or I thought did like a great job, you know. So I never had a lot of leaders to look up to when it come to the workforce. Um, sometimes you just move up into jobs and I think some of these folks just fell into them and I never really enjoyed how they treated me as an employee. And I took that and I vowed to like never be like that, but to make a difference in my employees' lives if I ever got the opportunity one day to, to do something positive for them and, and, and keep them motivated and moving forward. This photo is from a cruise ship that we took in February of this year. Sorry. So we set a company goal, a financial goal, to make some money 
And when we hit that goal, we let the, our top 40 employees uh, pick what they wanted to do, and they chose to go on a cruise. So I took ideas that I had in my head since I was started working as a young man that I thought would help motivate people as well. And we've finally been starting to get to implement some of these the last couple of years. So this is actually the second year in a row we hit our company goal. We've got to take some people on a cruise. Again, I'm in the people business, right? So these are our high school seniors that work for us. Um, I took this photo a couple weeks ago. This is going to be in the Laredo Morning Times. These are all uh, kids who are uh, young adults that are working and um, balancing school and work life to get it done uh, both you know, at, at home, at school, plus help us in our McDonald's restaurant. We're also known, obviously, for a first-time job. Uh, a lot of people, like the ones I showed earlier, make it a career, but we have opportunities for people with no experience, younger folks need flexible schedules, and these are just some of the people that I'm very proud to say are going to be graduating high school uh, this, uh, this month. So, you know, I talked a lot about of our employees, but obviously you guys don't know my employees, you know me because maybe you're a customer. And uh, I like to say we pass out smiles for a living, you know. A lot of times people come and see us throughout the day and uh, they're a little frustrated when they come get to their food or their window and you know our job is to smile at you and uh, hopefully we've been doing that enough to make you want to come back and see us. Um, so a little bit about why I'm here and um, you know sometimes I, I'm, I'm still a little blown away at, at people that want to invite me to come and speak. Uh, I'm, I'm not a I don't think I'm a great leader. I don't think I'm a great speaker. Obviously, I'm doing a presentation, not a speech, right? Um, but somebody, I think, saw something in me that um, um, maybe was, was something a little special. Maybe they thought I was a little, I don't know, I, I guess I stick my neck out there and I, I try to take some risks. But you guys are in this program because somebody saw something special in you. Maybe it was your counselor or your principal or somebody in this uh, leadership program that saw something in you. And that's, that's something that is very special, I think, um, to be in a program like this that helps guide you throughout uh, you know, all, all of high school uh, and some middle school as well is, is fantastic. You guys have one step up in being surrounded by people that are like-minded that want to be successful in life or are already successful in life and trying to mentor you. And I think that no matter where you, uh, no matter where you, you, you want to get or you think you are, um, to be surrounded with people that have a common mindset as you, uh, it wears off. Um, if you hang around people that are going out and getting drunk every Friday night, what do you think is going to happen to you after doing that for a few months? You might start living that lifestyle too. But if you're surrounding yourself with people that are focused on their future and they want to be the next generation of leadership in our city or whatever community you might end up in, those are the people you want to surround yourself with. And that's why I think this program is something very fantastic. And you have people that want to shadow and, and, and show you some of the things that they know to, to, better, to better yourself. So a lot of people might know me because I do stuff like this. This is at LBJ's. Uh, scholarship night last week. This is their valedictorian and uh, the Ronald McDonald's Charities gave her a scholarship for $2,000. And this is the easy part. It's very easy to walk around and hand out checks and take a photo. Um, and somebody very smart, a gentleman lives in Laredo, one of my best friends, he said this but with a lot more foul language. He said, anyone can write a check but few give their time. And the people that are help running this organization are giving their time out of their lives, not paid, <laughs> for free to help mold you into people that can run our community or, again, wherever you end up. We know people move on and move out. But our community is in need of leadership as well. And these people are volunteering their time to help you achieve your goals in life. So please, let's give the volunteers that help run this organization a round of applause for everything that they do for you.
So you probably recognize some of these logos, right? Um, these are the different organizations that I've volunteered my time for. Again, it's easy for me to go write a check, but it's a lot more difficult to go give them my time. And I'm very proud to say that I've been associated with all these organizations in Laredo. Um, this isn't a brag, this is just something to say like, look, these are all things you might never even heard of, but they're out there that you can go volunteer your time with and do something to help better your community. Again, time is more important. You also get to network at these places to meet other leaders, right? I'm here today because I volunteer on a board with Jesse, the Washington's Birthday Celebration Board. I would never know him if I didn't volunteer on this board. I wouldn't be here. I'd never get to meet you if, if I wasn't networking through these places with other like-minded people that want to make a better impact in our community. Again, surrounding yourself with people that want to do good. It's out there. You can find them. There's, there's 50 more in this city probably of great places to go volunteer your time. <clears throat> so a little bit of advice. Um, we do a lot of interviewing. Uh, we have a lot of turnover in our world where people get a job, they take off, they leave, maybe they go for the summer or something. What's the most important thing you think that we look for in a person when they're in an interview? Somebody. What do you got? Huh? Commitment. Are you committed? Very important. I like it. What else? Dedication. Important. I like that too. Attitude. Did you see my speech? Somebody was, were we cheating off this or what? Attitude. We like to say we hire on attitude. And it's not just McDonald's or me. It's just other places do this too. But if you come in our door with the right attitude, we can teach you any job there is. We have plenty of people who, um, you know, didn't, didn't graduate high school, don't have degrees, and they're running multi-million dollar businesses for us because they have the right attitude and they want to learn and they want to do good for us. It's amazing how you can, um, you can pick up on somebody, um, just their body language, you know, not necessarily all the words they say, but I know right now if you don't, aren't interested in me speaking and you haven't said one word to me just based on, you know, what you're doing or if you're asleep or something. So, I mean, your attitude towards me, I'm picking up on and I'm doing okay. I've done better, but I gotta, I gotta pick it up a little. I can tell. Okay, so what, uh, what's different about this guy here? He's excited, right? He's, he's not sleeping in the back. All these guys probably, you know, bought the same suit and carry the same briefcase and bought the same shoes, but one of them has a different attitude. And, you know, I, I really think that to be able to stand out, you know, later on in life, competition gets more fierce. Hopefully, everybody's going to have the degrees and everybody's going to have the good resume, but, you know, your attitude could get you in a door that maybe you didn't, uh, didn't think uh, or, or will get you ahead of, ahead of somebody else in, in, in an interview or in, in a job. So I also like to remind people that you're being judged. Whether you think so or want to admit it or, you know, or, or not, you're being judged all day long by pretty much everybody around you. I would assume that you judged me before I walked in the door. You already had some preconceived notions about me, and that's okay. That's human nature. That's who we are, right? That's probably from hunting and gathering or something. We gotta have instincts on people, and that's, that's good. But people are judging you, and I think sometimes people forget that, especially in today's society with social media and the ability to you know, communicate with everybody else. Well, you know, like I remind my nieces, just pretend your grandmother is going to read that or see that photo because she probably is. <laughs> and you're still going to act that way. Okay, well, you never know when you come and you're in an interview one day what people can dig up on you too. So thankfully there was no Facebook when I was your age. <laughs> so has anybody seen this before? Raise your hand if you've seen this. Good. Somebody gave you guys a good presentation. Hopefully not a speech, but 
this is really, uh, you know, I, you know, I got my MBA and, you know, I got degrees and I've been through seminars and, you know, we got training to McDonald's, but what's a leader? What's a good boss? It really comes down to these two pieces right here. You either got somebody that is saying, get this done, hurry up, I don't care, and, you know, maybe I sound like your, your mom or your dad or grandma, like, be quiet. But, you know, the other person is out here in the lead really kind of doing the job with you. You know, maybe, maybe your mom or, or, or your, sorry, or your dad is sitting down at the table with you and helping you with your homework, you know, versus telling you to go get that homework done. But maybe they're trying to help. You know, maybe they don't have the skills to help you with everything, but, you know, if they've got the right attitude and you know that they're on your team as well, you might be more likely to do good for them. And it's the same analogies when you get to the workforce. You know, what kind of boss do you want to be? Because you guys are all in this program, probably because you want to be future leaders at some point. Maybe not everybody's going to go into business. You're going to education or, uh, you know, be in a church or something. I don't know. But, you know, you will have the ability later on in life to be who you want to be as a boss. And I hope you remember that and learn from the people that don't do a good job, maybe, that you can do a better job. So when you get out in the world, you are going to find that there are a lot of different kinds of people. You already understand this. I, I know that. You all went through middle school. You understand that there's a lot of dynamics and different people and their attitudes and how they treat people. But when you get into the workforce, man, it's interesting. So this is my cell phone. I screenshotted this the other day, all right? This is me. I'm organized. I got folders, shopping, utilities, travel, video, news. I got one page. This is the person who's got eight different pages of, you know, they swipe on their app, like, I, I can't find my, where's the clock? I got to set my alarm. This is my wife, right? <laughs> hey, trust me. It, we make a good team <laughs> because we got two different brains coming together and we work, we make a pretty good team. But, you know, how you approach people to get what you want, maybe how you approach your mom or your dad is different, or your grandma or your teacher or your principal, how you approach people, you're learning these skills now whether you don't even know it, but how you approach people differently can get you the result based on how you approach them. If I need this room decorated for this party by 6 o'clock start time and it's noon, and I walk up to a person like myself and I hand them a piece of paper with 1 through 6 on it, go do these, I need this done by 6 o'clock, I can do that. I can follow this. You give me 1 through 6, I'll go do it. You give that piece of paper to my wife, garbage. She ain't even going to look at it. But you give her a pile of stuff on a table and say, this is everything, make it decorated. She'll have it done by five, right? She can see the end result without all the steps, but she's different. She's wired different. And as you get older, you're going to figure out how you get somebody to get on your team or get motivated or get the result you want from them or give you that $5 so you can go to McDonald's and get some ice cream or something. Your approach is different. Figure these skills out as you move forward, and they'll help you later on. Dominoes. All right, these are not dominoes. These are goals, right? You've probably been setting them since you were very small, and hopefully you keep continuing to set them as you get older. Maybe you wanted to get your driver's license, or maybe, you know, you wanted to bench 150 pounds, or maybe you wanted to get all A's in, in, in ninth grade, or... Whatever it is, you've, had, you've been setting goals. And I would encourage you to keep setting goals as you get older. Because as you get to be old and gray like us, sometimes you forget to keep setting goals and you turn into what I call cruise control. Don't get into cruise control. It'll probably happen, but the later in life you can get into cruise control, the better. Keep setting goals for yourself as you move on and you know, get through this program, get into college. Well, keep, keep setting them. Um, what's this? It's a circle, right? So think for a second of today, this snapshot in time right now, everything you know fits in this circle, right? Your education, your family history, your spiritual life, your friends, 
you know, your, your car or, you know, whatever you have, your, your the hoverboard thing that you fall off of or whatever, right? Everything is in here. And I would encourage you to continually, as you get older, to draw a bigger circle. Five years from now, you should have a bigger circle because you've graduated high school, maybe you've already graduated college and you got to travel to Europe or, you know, you learned another language or got your first boyfriend or girlfriend or something. You know, like these experiences in life are going to be first for you. And who you are today is going to change. And if you don't continue to set more goals and draw a bigger circle in your life, you're going to, you're going to get bored. And you guys are still young. You got a lot of life. And I would really encourage you to draw a bigger circle, keep setting goals, and um, really say thank you to the people that have helped you get to where you are today and continue in the future to help you move forward as well. So with that, I'd like to move into questions. So the first question I get is, do you eat at McDonald's? <laughs> yes. Well, after, did you play basketball, right? How'd you get so tall? Uh, I don't know. Um, do you eat McDonald's? Yes, I eat McDonald's pretty much seven days a week, at least six. I eat there for breakfast every day. I get a big breakfast, add cheese to the egg, so I eat sausage, scrambled eggs, and a half a biscuit. No hash brown, throw the hash brown away. You don't need the carbs. Again, I'm a type 1 diabetic, so I count carbs all day long. And uh, the good thing about McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or Whataburger or any restaurant that's nationally advertised, they post their calorie counts and they post their nutritional values, so I count carbs based off what I eat at restaurants. So I really eat out pretty much every meal all week and kind of learn from that. I learn from my competitors, too. People will see me at Chick-fil-A. We were just talking about Chick-fil-A or Whataburger, and they'll see me, and they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm shopping the competition, you know? I'm not, I'm not enjoying this at all, you know? But, you know, like I said, you, you should try to learn from everybody, including people that are your, your competition, too. But yes, I eat McDonald's, so. I'd like to open up for any questions. If, uh, if you maybe raise your hand, we'll, we'll, we'll call you out. Sir, yes, sir? Why did I choose McDonald's? Great question. Well, I didn't choose McDonald's. I married a very smart woman who chose McDonald's. This is a family business, and my wife is the owner-operator, and uh, I basically are, I don't know, CEO. But at the end of the day, my wife and I run our business together, and she's, she's the owner-operator. My wife's the boss, and as you get older in life, You realize your wife's the boss anyway, so you might as well work with her. Um, but very good question. Um, um, my wife's smarter than me. What else we got? All right. Well, no questions. How often do you travel? How often do I travel? Um, Maybe once a month, um, you know, like I said, we, we live here, we, we love it here. Um, you know, we travel for work more than pleasure, usually. Uh, McDonald's is based out of Chicago, Illinois, so we have to go up there for, for meetings quite a bit or over to Houston. That's where the local corporate office is. Um, but I would rather be on the beach than in the mountains is maybe a little bit about me personally. But um, maybe once a month. Yes, ma'am. What brought us to Laredo? So, good question. We had um, um, seven McDonald's restaurants in San Antonio, and uh, the gentleman that, that started uh, in 1973 was Mr. Ed Van S. He started the business here in Laredo. He built that uh, business up over, uh, over time to 15 restaurants in 2010. And um, he approached our family. He was, uh, he was ill, and he, uh, he approached our family in San Antonio and basically asked us, hey, uh, do you guys want to you know, buy the market down here and, and move down here and, and you know, try to be Laredoans? And uh, again, he, he was very sick at the time, and, and um, we, we looked at the business opportunity and the local community, and we said, you know what, let's go give it a shot. And uh, it's been one of the, the you know, best moves of our lives together. So 
started out as business, but we've fallen in love. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, you pick up, in my, in my head, like I try to be a sponge. I, I, I grew up, um, my father self-employed, uh, delivered flowers, um, and I never, I grew up with the mindset, and my dad always told me, like, there's always going to be somebody smarter than you, and faster than you, and better looking, and stronger, and richer, and you're never going to be the best. So you need to learn from these people how you can get better at whatever you're interested in, and, and as you grow, your interest will change. I'd say my dad gave me good advice, but I grew up, um, uh, you know, my dad would open the Bible and read it, and, you know, we'd always talk about the word humble and uh, how to be a humble person and not think that you're better than anybody or you're too smart to learn from somebody. You know, I, I'm blown away every day how smart the people are here in the city of Laredo about their ability to speak two languages and think in two languages. And that's a very, very unique asset that this community has, and I try to tell it to anybody. Um, I'll be in our play place, in our, in our playland, and there'll be a two and a half year old kid. And the, the grandma's there, and they're speaking to their child in Spanish. And the child is barely being able to speak, maybe three years old, you know, speaking back to the grandma in, Eng in Spanish. And I'll say something to that kid in English. He knows what I'm talking about, and he replies to me in English. I'm like, this kid's three, <laughs> right? And he can do what I can't. I can't speak Spanish, you know. I, I can't understand what his grandma's saying. I pick up some words, and I know, like, every fourth word, but this kid can do it better than me, and he's three years old. And that's an asset that we have in our community. Not everybody in this room is probably bilingual, but the majority are. And that's something that, that, that makes us unique and to other communities in the United States and you will have an additional leg up and an additional skill in your toolbox to use to help get ahead in life and use that asset in a positive way for yourself, I would say. Yes, ma'am. You know, <clears throat> um, I, I, I just wanted to go play, play basketball. You know, I mean, I wasn't, I mean, I was a 3.0 student, honestly. You know, I was, I was a good kid, but I really wasn't like, I wasn't going to go be a doctor. And, um, you know, once I got into school, into college, I, I wanted to be a teacher. Before that, I wanted to be in, uh, in the Air Force, and I wanted to be a teacher. Then I, I got my uh, MIS degree, which is like computer programming, and then I didn't like that. I got into sales, and I mean, I don't know. I mean, we're adults, and we look like we're supposed to have all the answers in life and have this huge plan. But, you know, just there, there's a phrase like, you think you have your, your plan and your life figured out, just go tell God, you know, and God's going to change it for you. <laughs> because, uh, you know, you just have to just roll with it, man, like, like, and make the positives out of situations. But in business, like, I, my, my dad was an entrepreneur. He owned a delivery business, so I always was interested in business and numbers, and he, you know, at the end of the month, he'd do his bills, and, you know, I was always interested in business, and I figured, eh, if anything else, like, that's probably what I'd fall back into, and, you know, I, I, I spent my 20s um, um, working on my MBA on, at nights and weekends on, on my own, getting school, student loans, you know. Um, again, I didn't grow up in this this, this life, you know, um, and it's funny, I, I graduated from University of Iowa, it's a top 15 school in the nation for to get your MBA program, and uh, I graduated in May of 2008, and in September of 2008, I went to work at McDonald's in a kitchen, learning how to grow hamburgers and make sandwiches and french fries and chicken nuggets. So. Here I go, I spent all this time, you know, in education, getting my master's and trying to better myself and think like I'm gonna go be a CEO. Well, you know, then you meet love your life and you're like, yeah, we work in McDonald's and you're gonna have to go, you know, work in a restaurant. Like, okay, you know, my dad taught me to be humble and learn from everywhere I go and, you know, again, I've grown as a person since I've got into this world, this McDonald's world and, uh, you know, I guess maybe now I am a CEO of a million dollar company, you know, so I guess it works out. <laughs> what else? Who's the youngest, the youngest person that worked on your bunker? 
Uh, 16, we'll say, you know, uh, usually um, a 16 year old is, is, is what we start with. Um, on occasion, we'll have a, a little younger. Um, there's different rules and laws for Texas and as well as the nation as far as what job duties a, an employee can do at certain ages. And uh, under 16, it really limits like what they can do in our restaurant because we have, you know, French fri fryers, you know, 400 degrees and grills at 350. And, you know, um, they can't get injured. They can't, you know, there's a lot of, nobody can get injured, but I'm just saying like they can't, they can't use the grill. They can't cut the chicken. They can't do things. So uh, 16, it's a little different rule set than it, um, you know, it's usually 16 is when they start at McDonald's. Yes, ma'am, you were first. Man, that's a great question. I, uh, I've never ate a Big Mac. Um, I've never ate a filet of fish. I'm like a meat and cheese kind of guy. Like, I'm so boring. Like, I don't. I, I, I double cheese only cheese for lunch uh, with a half a small fry. Uh, breakfast, I either do a sausage biscuit, add cheese if I'm on the road. And again, nothing else. And then, or a um, big breakfast when you get the scrambled eggs, cheese. So boring, you know. <laughs> boring. Maybe a quarter pounder, only cheese, small, half a small fry. Like if it's, I'm really hungry. So, and then whatever I want for dinner because I was pretty good throughout breakfast and lunch. You, someone over here had one too. Yes, ma'am. My least favorite food at McDonald's or. Uh, uh, Tartar sauce, like, I mean, I just, I don't understand that. Like, it's, uh, I don't like mayonnaise. Maybe it's a mayonnaise-based product. I don't, um, tartar sauce. So that's filet fish so. I'll eat our fish patty by itself, or just plain, but no tartar sauce. Yes, sir. Very, very great question. So, um, Full-time employees defined by the Department of Labor is a, a 30 hours plus or more for work uh, is defined as full-time. And um, we're averaging around 285 full-time employees. Um, you know, a lot of our, our folks are part-time workers and they want to work three days a week. That's one of the um, good things about McDonald's is we, we offer flexible schedules. So if you, you want to come in and work breakfast on Saturday morning, like, cool, I, I need smiles and friendly people to do that on Saturday morning. And, um, you know, if you want to work uh, four days a week and on the overnights because you have another full-time job, that's great too. So the majority of our people are part-time, um, but the breakfast and lunch crew typically is a more full-time um, career in inter uh, interested employee. So when you come through our drive through at breakfast, you probably see the same lady, you know, or the same gentleman, um, or maybe at lunch, it's kind of the same crew. Then at dinner, it's like, that's when we turn more people over. That's a lot more of the part-time work. Um, the high school guys, you know, they, <laughs> they want to run off and, you know, do other things. So, but it's always a balance. But um, a third maybe is full-time. Good question. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. For me, honestly, like, the attitude thing is, is right. Um, it's, you're going to take beatings, you know? I mean, absolute beatings in life. And um, I was 35 years old. I woke up one day and I, I was, had type 1 diabetes, you know? Like, people were like, thought I was lying. You know, like, how can you possibly get diabetes? That only happens to kids if you get juvenile diabetes. But like, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> you, you just got to have a positive mindset and However, the negative of the situation is like you break one leg, like thank God that you have the other leg. Do you know how bad it would suck if you broke both, both legs, <laughs> right? I mean, you, you can have the woe is me attitude or you can make lemonade with the lemons that get thrown at you. So that's honestly like my mindset. I love listening to comedians. Um, I think comedians have a interesting spin on life about how to you know, take the, the hurt in their life and make it something that people can learn from. And uh, that, I've always enjoyed that because they, some of them use foul language, don't use that. But, but they, they, they're good storytellers and, and uh, I don't know, just be positive. 
but you probably need to have more to do tonight, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's send this. Thank you very much.